Hey everyone, Cooper here, host of the fine podcast you're listening to. I just want to let you know that the episode you clicked on has a format that is very heavily inspired by a podcast called The Bookening. To be clear, our thoughts and opinions in this episode are our own, but the format is very similar to this podcast. I just wanted to give you a heads up and give credit where it is due. With that out of the way, enjoy the show. Coming up next, Book and It Reads, Pride and Prejudice. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Booking It. I'm, of course, your humble and eloquent host, Mr. Cooper Cobbs, and joining me today is my good friend, Mr. Matthew Killingsworth. How are you doing today, Matthew? Howdy, Cooper. I'm doing fine. Any uh, updates in life? Mm. Oh, I applied at Sky Ranch for next summer to be a lifeguard. Ooh, a yeah. lifeguard. Yep, I did that on Monday. Nice. So, basically, if you want your life saved, come to Sky Ranch. That's right. <laughs> Oh, that was kind of Was good. that supposed to be a pun? Yeah. In multiple ways. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't think you intended that. No, I didn't, but it worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you want to meet the real life saving, also come to Sky Ranch and we'll teach you about that's Jesus. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's that was that was why it was funny to me and Cooper for everyone who didn't get yeah. the joke. But yeah, anyways. Yes. Yeah, lots of life saving going on at Sky Ranch next summer, so I'm definitely excited for it. Cooper, wish you could come. Yeah, I, I, will I be coming, my, most likely. Yeah, well, our whole family besides my dad really wants to go to family camp, mm. so we'll see if we can make that happen this year. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Well, you, you might want to get a move on. Those spots fill up quick. No, I know, I know. <laughs> anyway, you know what's getting a move on is us talking about Pride, Pride and, and prejudice. prejudice. Yeah, I could see where that <laughs> was going. I mean, it's so obvious. Okay. <laughs> So in this episode, we're really going to focus more on the characters in said book. Right. So my mom always has this a little bit annoying homeschool question that she likes to ask. What do you Who see? is the main character oh. and what do they want? But I'm actually going to ask that same question to you. Oh. Who is Elizabeth and what does she want, Matthew? Well, Elizabeth is the main character. Yeah, but who <laughs> is she? She is um, the sister of all the other Bennets and the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Bennett. And she is, well, it's, it's interesting because you can tell the most about her and make her seem like the most interesting, but you really only know that because the story is focused on her. So it's kind of a circle, but like she is the most interesting out of all the people in the book because you, you get to know her better and it focuses on how her mind works kind of. And so it's the most relatable. Well, yeah, but I, it was written that way on purpose. I think that's why I think it's a full circle. But but like, what's her character? Like, what are what are her flaws, weaknesses? What are um, uh, she is kind of prideful, I guess, at some points. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. She's she's not very open to changing her opinion once she has an opinion set on something. I would say that. Like it's true, she's very the first, stubborn. The first time she saw Darcy, for example, who she eventually married. Spoiler, I said spoiler yeah. after. Too bad. Uh, it's kind of first, our thing. The first time, she, yeah, the first time she saw him, she like saw him being rude, and he was actually like talking about her, and was like, "Yeah, she's not pretty enough for me. She doesn't have good enough connections. I'm not gonna dance with her at the ball." And she, so that like obviously that was a rude thing for him to do. But like she was like, "Okay, he's a jerk, and I'm just gonna think he's a jerk forever, no matter what." Right. And like in the end, when she finally learned to open up and he finally learned to open up from his flaws, then they both wound up together and fell in love. And it was pretty cool. But like while they were all while they were both still like being stubborn and stuck in their own worlds and like refusing to be open to any opinions, then. Right. That's where the prejudice comes that's, in. Yeah, exactly. That's where the prejudice and pride, really. But yeah, both. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's also. Really, my favorite thing about this book, and maybe I've said this on mic, is watching these two characters, Elizabeth and Mr. Darcy, start at the beginning of the novel, and neither of them are perfect. They're obviously very flawed, and obviously that's showcased in the first proposal. 
Uh-huh. But as the novel moves along, you see character development, especially in Elizabeth, her becoming more and more open to Mr. Darcy. And Mr. Darcy, not just Elizabeth finding more out about Mr. Darcy and realizing that he's actually a good guy, but Mr. Darcy actually changing as a result of Elizabeth's harsh words and the proposal and him developing into a man worthy of marrying, right? Right. And it's just a incredible thing that Jane Austen has. She nails the character development. Oh yeah. Across the course of the novel. Yeah, for every character really. Like so inedible. Did, yeah. She did so good with that. And yeah. really, I'd like to add on to that. So, whoa, my mic just fell. Um. So, like Cooper was saying, uh, like once they finally both opened up, then it turned out to be a really great marriage and everything. But basically, like when she she was prejudiced against him and he was prejudiced against her from their first meeting, he saw her as like not not coming from as wealthy a family as his, and from right. uh and from having less connections and from not being the most pretty girl on the planet and all this stuff. And she saw him as being a jerk for thinking all those things. But once she gave him a chance, and she really only gave him a chance again because. Uh, of what he did for her sister he kind of got their family out of a tight spot by like paying off uh, for a wedding and like paying off a bunch of stuff and uh, so she she saw that one nice thing and gave him another chance and then she realized like it was in the book at some point oh Darcy said it it was when they were they didn't it wasn't really a second proposal it was like they both just mutually agreed they were going to get married, right? Kind of. Yeah, it's kind of the on a, proposal is on kind a walk. of like implied. He, did, he didn't yeah. like he didn't like get on his knee and propose again. He mm-hmm. he just kind of like I don't know. They were just walking and talking, and all of a sudden they were just like, "Let's get married." And then yeah, they talked yeah. about everything for a while. And during that, he was like, "I'm so sorry for the way I've acted. I've learned better now." Really, the reason right. is because of how I was raised, and he explained how his parents like hadn't been very close to him, raising him, and he had just observed how they acted and hadn't had anyone to teach him differently. So, like once she right. gave him a chance, there's actually like a genuine reason for why he was disrespectful before. Not that an excuse is good, but like it's not like yeah. he's just a jerk. He he just right. didn't know any different. And so once they both opened up and were willing to learn and willing to like accept rebuke versus um versus deny it because like that's Mm -hmm. that reminds me of what proverbs talks about a lot is like the wise person loves reproof and grows from it right and the foolish man uh rebukes wait or like rebuke rebukes reproof basically right he scoffs at the yeah scoffs at it yeah yeah um and it's one of my favorite things again about pride and prejudice is both people accepting accepting criticism or something of, of that of that nature and then growing from it as well like this will be probably the last comparison I'll make to the movie, but in the movie, it just doesn't quite work because of two things. Number one, you can't see the whole character development because it's just two hours and maybe it's just the scenes they chose. But also, it's Elizabeth really just realizes that Darcy was actually a great guy all along, and Darcy didn't like change that much. It's not Darcy saying, actually, no, 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 like it is in the book, I was at fault too. But it's really Elizabeth realizing that she was at fault and then just thinking Darcy was a great guy after staring at his marble statue, which is really what happened. No joke, that's oh, what happened. Okay, that's weird. Yeah, she likes – it's it's meant to be metaphorical, but she just kind of stares at a statue, and her aunt's like, isn't it beautiful? And Isn't he beautiful or something like that? Yeah. yeah. But it is really it's really cool to see both of them change and grow. Right. Well, and That's not how it was in the book because she didn't just say, oh – Wow, he's really good looking in that statue. Yeah. Oh, and he's rich enough right. to build a statue. Oh, now I like him. Yeah. Yeah, it's not definitely <laughs> she, not that. she actually like that's why she was the most like relatable and uh interesting character is because she was the one who didn't care about money or position in marriage. She thought you should marry for love. And like as Christians, obviously that's what we believe in. And generally most of the world believes in that these days. It's a lot different than how it was in this book. Just society, even though mm-hmm. like there are like I don't know, just I, we don't need to get into all that, but there's a lot of different, um, yeah. like reasons for marriage and love and that kind of thing these days. But it's generally yeah. not about money as much as it used to be back then, or positioning for sure. Because yeah. they would marry like even Jane at first, even though she did respect Bingley at first. I don't think they were really in love. I think she was like, he's a well put man. He has good, he has good communications, right. has good friends and good money, good connections. So. Like, this is just going to be beneficial to my whole family if I marry him. And she did it out of that. And then eventually, it did. I think it did turn into love, and it was, like, a good relationship. Right, right. which is what happened when Darcy split them up, but she was really devastated. Like, Right. They really did love each other. Right, that's that's kind of the part where it showed it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But, yeah. You mentioned a little bit about 
Elizabeth being relatable, but to you personally, as a individual, Matthew Killingsworth, did you find Elizabeth relatable? Um, and if so, in what ways? Um, I mean, no, I mean, I, I would say the person most like me was definitely Mr. Bingley, you know, <laughs> kind of perfect, rich. No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, I mean, not exactly. I kind of like understood what she was thinking and like why she was thinking mm-hmm. it most of the time because her character was explained very well. Right. But like, I didn't think I would have acted the same way in most of the situations. Yeah. I think that she's most the most relatable though, like you said, because she's the most real. Besides Elizabeth and maybe Mr. Darcy, mm-hmm. they're the only main characters that are actually three-dimensional and the mm-hmm. other ones are really... I mean, they're still really, really good characters, but they're in some sense tropes, right? Lydia is just the airheaded little giggly girl. Jane is the beautiful looking. Yeah, I feel like Jane know, and Lydia are kind of opposites, and then Elizabeth's just in the middle. They are, right? Um, and then Mrs. Bingley, she's the pompous lady who wants her daughters <laughs> married. She you just, know, Bingley, like you said, is rich and yeah. Basically, that's it. And Mrs. Bennett and Mr. Bennett, just the idea of both of them cracked me up. Like, there's not even any specific. Yeah, they're so funny. There's not even any specific thing that I think of or like line that comes to mind that makes me laugh. It's literally just the idea of writing a book about a mom whose only goal in life is to get her daughters married and basically yeah. like old woman English, like rich people gossip. Like, that's the whole book. It's yeah. literally just like the love lives of some random girls. Right. And, you know, what's funny is, now that I think about it, Mrs. Bennett, I mean, obviously is one of the closest things we ever get to a, a bad guy, or she's not portrayed in the best light, I should say. But one thing that we don't often see in today's culture is people wanting to get married really fast. It's not, right, it's not encouraging women to, or and men to, to enter into, you know, a godly union. A covenant, right? yeah. It's, right, a covenant. Once it's a covenant, then it's like a bigger deal to break it. Right. And we were talking, I don't know if this, like, why would anyone outside of Christianity like, w- want to get married? Like, what benefits is that? What what, what is the purpose of it? But, mm-hmm. yeah, like, I mean, we talked about it last time. It's really refreshing to read a book where the godly form of marriage is expressed and, you know, and, and for the right reasons portrayed in a good light. Did you find Elizabeth to be a, a likable character or was she really, like, an annoying protagonist? Like on the on the on the scale, or what would you say? Well, I would say uh, both. I would say what frustrated me is because usually when I'm reading or watching something, I'll find that one character. It's usually one of the main characters, but sometimes maybe not. I'll find that one character that I'm like rooting for no matter what because they always handle situations well, or like I know like it'll be funny when they do something. I don't know. I'll always just be yeah. rooting for this one uh, character that I've chosen at close to the beginning. So I had thought I'd chosen her, but then it ended up being like her and Darcy both had a lot of like, both of them had those moments. Darcy probably had more, but both of them had those moments where you're like, why did you answer like that? Or why did you respond in that yeah. way? Like you, I, <laughs> it just, it was just kind of frustrating. Like you should have just done this one thing different. <laughs> yeah. But overall, do you find her to be likable or? Yeah. I, yeah. I think overall I found pretty much all the characters to be likable. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Even even like the the quote unquote bad characters like Mrs. Bennett, who are meant to be very annoying, are just hilarious because yeah, just the idea Jane Austen's is funny hilarious. writer. Yeah, talk a little bit about Mr. Dar- Mr. Bennett and Mrs. Bennett, but we talked a little bit off mic about this as well. But which one do you think is the worst of the two? Which one is of who at the greatest fault of between Mr. and Mrs. Bennett? Um. Well, I mean, I guess you're going to make the argument that it's Mr. Bennett as the husband and has the responsibility <laughs> to control his wife. But, I mean, not, not, which not he like kind that, of, but... He kind of doesn't. He kind of just lets her do whatever and say he's whatever. A, he's a beta, as, as I like to say. <laughs> as he, yeah. I don't know. I still like him for some reason, but... I don't know. I don't. I never thought of any... I never thought of either of them as evil, to be honest. I just thought of no, them both I, I as either. funny. Like, because if they were really great parents, then the whole thing wouldn't have worked. That's true. (laughs) But then again, the whole notion of them having to be silly is like, that's not the first thing you think about when you think of a, of a, of a parent, you know, it's Mr. Darcy and Mr. Bennell are just silly. That's, I don't know. Yeah. But like for Mr. Bennett, whenever you would think it was going to be like, Mr. Bennett is the manly, like dad has a manly dad moment or something like that, or is like protecting his daughter's 
kind of moment. Like when I remember reading when Mr. Darcy followed him back into his library where he's always hanging out, which is like kind of a scary place because nobody's allowed in the library. It was like set up this whole way. And uh, you're like, ooh, what's going to happen? Mr. Darcy's about to be put in his place. And then a little bit later, he calls Elizabeth in there. And he's like, yeah, I never would have turned down Mr. Darcy anything. He's got too much money. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> he's literally like, even if I didn't support it, I would have just given him to you. Luckily, I do support it. <laughs> yeah, he's like, the only reason I wouldn't let you marry him is I thought you hated him, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, I mean, he's rich, so. You know. So I was going to let him anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, you totally just ruined that moment, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, What else? Okay. Mr. Darcy, so as a as a gentleman yourself, as a man, what about Mr. Darcy do you like and not like? Um, well, I I I don't know. I guess I didn't like like he had no humility at first, and he was rich and good-looking and he knew it, and that he like literally thought and expressed verbally out loud to everyone that he was better than everyone else. Mhm. Mm and that's kind of like I don't know. That's not how you would be following Christ, obviously, but I right, don't know I mean, he cared about that. Yeah, as as the novel progressed, though, at at the end, Mr. Darcy's obviously a gentleman that Jane Austen wants us to think is worthy of marrying. So at the end, Mr. Darcy, or the the, the Mr. Darcy at the end of the novel, what can you take away from his I don't know performance <laughs> or his his character growth up to that point? Oh, at the end. Well, he just, like I said, like he just kind of opened himself up to like learning from reproof that he was given and like even Mrs. Bennett or not. Yeah. Mrs. Bennett. Sorry. I got confused because there's like a million Miss Bennett. Yeah. And then no, Mrs. Bennett, like the mom, she would like openly just hate on him in front of him or whatever. Like talk yeah, to Mr. True. Bingley and be like, your friend's a jerk. And he's like, I'm standing right here. And yeah. <laughs> but like towards the end, he finally like listen to what she said he was able to disregard all the unnecessary comments about him or just ignore it and but he was able to learn from the ones that were actually true and so like yeah you didn't at the end you didn't see him bragging about his wealth or anything he was just yeah. like honest to elizabeth and he was like i actually care about you yeah and i think that mr darcy's character growth is is something that all men who want to propose can take away in the beginning, obviously, like you mentioned, he's very prideful. He walks into his first proposal to Elizabeth all arrogant, uh -huh. and he's like, oh, she's definitely going to accept me. Well, yeah, he was and like, there's the no words, chance like, she turns me down. Right, and he's like, do 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 me the honor of taking my hand. And that was really just formality. Like, he was like, she's going she's gonna to want me. And then his pride is obviously very hurt when Elizabeth says, uh-uh, I hate you. <laughs> and then as, as the novel grows on, he realizes, he goes on, he realizes that, what what Elizabeth really wants is not just a, a good looking dude with some money, but it's a guy who she wants to actually marry, mm -hmm. right? And we've been talking about this. It's it, it's a trope that has now been so overdone, the marry for love trope, and mm -hmm. it's been so Disneyfied. But it is one of the original versions of that, and it actually works because it's not like explicitly stated. It's same just, thing. Same thing with the happy ending thing. <laughs> right. It's exactly. But it's not just like. I want to marry for love. It's I want to actually marry the right guy instead of marrying for social pressures. Mm -hmm. And right. I think that's it actually why works I think better. She was the balance between Jane and Lydia because Lydia was right. like, you could say Lydia was marrying for love, but it wasn't a healthy relationship. No, because definitely not. It was, they, yeah, they didn't do it the right love. way. Like they just, they said, we don't care ab at all about anything else. We don't even care enough to make sure this is going to be a stable relationship and like go through things the right way. We're just mm -hmm. going to do it because we think we're in love. And and then like well, I, I mean, like I that's mentioned, what, that's what let's that's what Lydia thought. I mean, I don't know about Mr. Wickham. Right. And then um uh sorry, Jane, like I mentioned earlier, was at first like I said it changed later, like everyone kind of changed in the end, but Jane at first was marrying out of social pressures out of what benefits it would have for her family and i guess for her and that kind of stuff and uh -huh. then elizabeth was like no both of you are wrong i'm gonna marry for love but i'm also gonna like involve my parents and like go about uh -huh. it the right way and have like make sure i love him before i just run off with him yeah in pride and prejudice we talked about mr and spinet they're not portrayed as like the the bad guys but in pride and prejudice 
who was your least favorite character? And I leave the interpretation of that question to you. Who was your least favorite character? Catherine Dubow. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> I just found every scene with her just to be so annoying. Yes. And honestly, I'm not sure how much is that is on the character and how much that on Jane Austen. Just because every scene with her was her being was her actually condescending, her sticking her nose in everybody's business, and then her right trying to obviously roast Elizabeth. She and was literally so irrelevant burned. the whole time. Like she she yeah. had no relevance in any in anything. She was just an aunt who was like, "I'm gonna get involved with my nephew who I never see his business and all of his friends' businesses." And I'm like, yeah. just stay out of it, lady. You don't even, like, live close. You're not even in the hood. Yeah. Yeah. She was annoying. Also, it just drove me crazy how many times that stupid Collins character, who is probably close to my least favorite, um, yeah. he mentioned her so much that, like, before we even met her in the book, I was like, she's annoying. Just because he mentioned her in every sentence yes. he said. Yes, yeah. <laughs> lady Catherine. Yeah, you kind of already, you were, uh, forgive me, but as soon as she walked into the room, actually already prejudiced against her. Yeah. Mr. Matthew, Pride and Prejudice is a is a very good book, and obviously we can take away many things from it. But after you read Pride and Prejudice and finished it, what is the main thing that you took away and will implement it either now or in your future courting relationships? Hashtag no means no. <laughs> okay. Okay. I guess we're not going to explain that joke, are we? That's not a joke. Well, it's an inside joke. Oh. Okay. Isn't it? Did we explain that last time? I don't know. Anyway. Well, it's also it's, we, also, it's also my answer to the question, so. Sure. I guess uh, when you propose to a girl, especially if you haven't been interacting with her that closely, then make sure that you actually know what she wants in a man and do your best not to conform to what she wants because it's, you're never going to be a perfect human being, but do your best to be a man worthy of 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 marrying right try to be you know godly try to be not prideful and prejudiced and try to you know shake yourself up that you're the best you can and resent yourself like that and if she still says no what does it mean cooper it means no yeah (laughs) but i mean it is a little bit different the 1800s where you had not necessarily the same courting slash dating system as you do today right today if if someone proposes it's not going to be out of the blue no it's not going to be an acquaintance it's going to be someone who hopefully you have dated or courted for a couple of months at least um so i suppose that's a question do you think that the today's system of dating is better than the system they had back then in the 1800s Mm. I mean, I think it's better that we don't have as much like social pressure anymore. I don't think the time, I don't think like necessarily the time really matters that much. Yeah. Like it's not the structure that we have. Right. Well, yeah, I know, but you were kind of basing it off of like how long before someone proposes, how long do you have to date before that kind of thing? Oh, I see that time. Like, I don't, I don't really think that matters that much. It's just like when you're ready either way. Right. As long as you're both like committed, then that's fine. But if it's so, like, it can be also wrong either way. If you're if you're just holding out because you're scared, then that's not the way to do it either. But like, also, if you're ready, you shouldn't be holding out. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. It's it's when when you get into a relationship before marriage, and in a godly one, hopefully you have been talking about marriage the entire time. Right. Right, and so as dating is it's it's a chance to get to know the person better and to get ready for marriage if that if that be the case right Mm -hmm. so it's when you're dating it's not okay date for a minimum of six months before you can propose it's right right, exactly talking about this we both are in love with each other and we know that we're not perfect but but we both know that we're both committed and we're going to be forgiving and like willing right exactly yeah yeah well yeah like and then like you said like that's that's what i was talking about the uh like minimum of six months or whatever because i feel like that's kind of more of a pressure now than it was yeah, then it, it is like obviously there's extremes on both sides because back then they would be like oh i just met you yesterday and you're my cousin you want to get married no oh that means yes no that means yeah, yes yeah. double yes and she's just like shut up but like he but now now i've heard 
like even amongst my personal friends, like they'll be like, Oh, you, you got married after only two months of dating or something like, Whoa, that's right. really short. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not one to pass judgment. Like, I don't know these people. Like if, yeah, if that's how their great, their relationship is, that's awesome for them. But like, yeah. it's d- just different for every relationship. Like whenever you're mm-hmm. ready, you're ready. That's why I think right. there shouldn't, that's why I think they're like, that's why I don't, I'm not biased towards either. Uh, what did you call it? Standard system system. Yeah. Cause like, it doesn't nec- I don't think the time really matters. It's just whenever you're ready. Yeah. And even with Mr. Darcy too, like he, he didn't know Elizabeth that well. Mm-mm. I mean, they had met at balls, they had met at dinners, but well, yeah. he hadn't got taken the time. And I think that's kind of what led to his downfall because he was obviously very, very crushed. Um, mm-hmm. and because of his pride. But yeah. And it is we're not saying like <laughs> please date for longer than a day like in Frozen, right? Like, don't sing one three minute song and be like, Yeah, we're ready. Right. But at the same time, it's you getting to know the other person and realizing, yeah, I think this is someone that I want to spend my life with. All right, Matthew, on a scale of one to ten, how high would you rate Pride and Prejudice? Mm, out of like ten what's don't we usually do a Oh yeah. Uh out of ten dances at the ball. <laughs> uh I would rate it. Uh, a good eight. A good eight, really? Yeah. I'm gonna go ten. Oh wow. Yeah, perfect cool. novel. Perfect. Yeah. Wow. I mean, as, as as a novel can be, yes. All right. So now it's time for some donor shoutouts. Where would someone go if they wanted a donor shoutout? Well, they go to patreon.com forward slash booking it and donate to any of the five dollar and above tiers. That is correct. Now, last episode we had a legendary. <laughs> Shout out, shtick as I like to call it, where I said the patron and you said the name of the manor that they would reside in. And off mic, you said that you wanted to continue that. So have you come up with new new manor names beforehand, or are we just going to wing this? I did, but I didn't write them down, so I forgot them. Huh. But yeah, I definitely came up with a bunch of good ones that I liked. And when we were talking about it last Friday, too, I was thinking of some, and then I forgot them. Should have wrote them down. Yeah, this is why I think that the Notes app on a phone is probably the most underrated app. But <laughs> Isn't that what you're <laughs> no looking at right here. now to name the patrons? <laughs> it is. It's very useful. <laughs> All right, I'll say the patron, then you just come up with a name of the manor on the fly because mm-hmm. you need to do it again. All right, first off, Nana. Sunset Hill. <laughs> All right, Jeff Happy Oela. <laughs> just think of, like, neighborhoods in Prosper, Texas. Uh-huh. <laughs> Willow Ridge. Mike and Sylvia. Um, Green Gables. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Varetsky. Malfoy Manor. <laughs> okay, it's a little dark. <laughs> um, oh, the newlywed Uncle Sebi. Ooh. Number 12, Grimuald Place. What the heck? This is not fair. <laughs> Aunt Jane, Uncle Sam. Hogwarts Castle. Moses. Wingfeather Cottage. Zara. Um, Mountain Lake Valley. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Chris Hagedon. <laughs> Doesn't that sound so fancy, even though it's just three, like, geo- geographical terms just mixed together Maybe. into one word? It Maybe. does sound fancy valley. Do you have one to Chris yet? No, I was stalling. Um, <laughs> Seashell Shore. <laughs> Anna. Uh, there's more. Um, wait, what does Bilbo Baggins call his thing? Uh, the sh- oh, Bag End. Bag end, yeah. Emily. <laughs> Just make up an adjective and like a place and smash them together. Uh, can't think of a good place that describes a house, though. The White House. Emily, I guess you're <laughs> going to be president one day. <laughs> that was the best I could think you of. You know, it's funny. You know, it's funny. When it comes to donor shout outs in the episode, we're all like, oh, how many patrons do we have? But then when it comes to like getting money, we're like, <laughs> support us here. <laughs> You know, so okay. thank you so much for for donating. <laughs> and we definitely want more of you guys, even though <laughs> it takes a while to do Even though they just outs. throw all the pressure, the last minute pressure onto me. It's true. It's true. I would love to hear from you guys what you think your favorite donor shout out thing is, because I don't know. You've had some pretty great ones, I think. And some pretty bad ones. Some pretty bad ones, yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week. Oh, you know what the worst one was? I just thought of it. 
What is it? It was when you said we have to descri- like rate our patrons on like one to ten or something like that. What? And yeah, and I was just like ten. 10 10 and then it came to isaiah's turn and he was like nine and i was like why are you favoring patrons <laughs> <laughs> did i say that yes he said hopefully had... i said that with the intention of no. rating everybody 10 yeah i mean no you didn't but i i saved your butt and then isaiah just didn't catch on and he said nine for i think it was like his aunt and uncle he said nine <laughs> i was like really <laughs> well let, let me be clear we love all of our patrons 10 yes, out of 10 10 out of 10 11 out of 10 yeah <laughs> anyway We'll be back next week with Jane Eyre. Yeah. And make sure to support us. Give us a five-star rating and review. And until next time, keep on booking it.